team that uh, I'm City Council President Bill Dwight Nelby is presiding tonight. Um, tonight, the big item on the agenda is the budget. But first, before we get to our public hearing on that and also voting on it, um, we will um, do what we do about this time, which is to invite the public to give them an opportunity to speak on any topic. Uh, we ask that you contain, contain your remarks to three minutes or under. Uh, when you step up, please state your name and your address before you speak. You're not required to be the North Hampshire resident in order to speak. Um, we do ask that you uh, also conform and comport yourself in such a way that, uh, that respects the decorum of the chamber. Um, also, when you speak, the council's not allowed to respond. This is your time to speak, not ours. Um, you just can make your remarks, but asking us questions, please don't ask us questions because we won't be able to answer. So, um, that said, first up, Joe Squires. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Joe Squire, so you we can have I went before the traffic county committee the other night, and unfortunately, Ryan, you're going to have to hear my spiel again. And I believe there was another, another member of the, uh, okay, here we go. Uh, I'm here to talk about traffic, truck traffic on Lincoln Avenue again. I bought my house on Lincoln Avenue close to 30 years ago. Lincoln Avenue now is a disaster. Truck traffic to the coal plant and the industrial park is out of control. These trucks are now using our once quiet street as a main route to the coal plant. The city of Northampton granted Coca-Cola an expansion years ago. The residents of Lincoln Avenue should not have to put up the volume of trucks that now go to, go to the expanded coal plant. It is downright dirty, dusty, and noisy. The coal companies say they want to be good neighbors. I do not think they know the definition of a good neighbor. The residents of Lincoln Avenue have done all they can meeting with coke officials, the police department, putting up our own signs. The list goes on and on. We had meetings with Mayor Markowitz, former city councilor Angela Plasman, former city councilor Owen Freeman Daniels. We invited Councilor Ryan O'Donnell, chairman of the transportation committee, who I realized inherited this problem, to a couple meetings in our neighborhood, both no shows. Last year, about 15 residents and the children went before the city council to voice their concerns. There are about 20 young children living on our street. There's a disaster, hopefully not a tragedy, waiting to happen. We were told by the city council last year to file a traffic counting report, which we did. The report came back showing about 150 trucks going through Lincoln Avenue in a two-week period. I would not wish this volume of truck traffic on any else, anybody else's street. <clears throat> These trucks roll through our street 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It is time effective immediately between the city and coke officials to bring this disaster to an end. We have been complaining about this for at least the past seven years. That's a long time with no results. The road is turning into a mess. The trucks roll by as you try to eat your dinner on your deck. The house shakes and rattles as the trucks go by in the middle of the night as you try to sleep. <clears throat> Until you have lived on Lincoln Avenue, you have no way to know what we go through on a daily basis. There are signs everywhere, they do not work, and there is little or no enforcement. In closing, this is a huge nightmare that we face every day. The city granted Coke the expansion, and it's time for our elected officials and management at the Coke plant to fix this problem. Our patients are gone, and our quality of life has been ruined. We all pay a fair share of taxes, some more than others. We deserve a better quality of life. If anyone on this council would like to meet with me and my neighbors, give me a call. We can meet at my house, 38 Lincoln Avenue, sit on my deck, try to talk as they roll on by. I've been thinking lately, mostly in the middle of the night, after been awakened from the truck traffic. Is this the house I bought 30 years ago? The house we raised our daughters in? The house I call my home. The street I used to be, the street that I used to love. Is this where I really want to live? On a truck infested street caused by the expansion of Coke plant granted by the city of Northampton. Thank you for your time. I hope you all have a peaceful summer. Michelle. 
you're oh. listed on here. So I wanted to put my Good. spink on too. Just he, he can, to yeah, everyone it. gets a chance okay. to speak even if they're. I won't be as long as my husband. But I just have a couple comments. Um, I don't know if y'all read the article in the paper today. Um, oh yeah, Michelle. I'm sorry. Can you name an address, please? Michelle Squires, 38 Lincoln Avenue. Also talking about the trucks on Lincoln Avenue and everybody's, I don't know if you've seen the article on the front page or not, but just a couple things that the uh, Gazette has in here. Um, one is um, quoted by Mayor Narkowitz, we're trying to make getting in and out of the industrial park through Damon Road easier for trucks. Well, if anybody like me who drives around the city all day as part of their job um, is out and about all the time, we all know that that light at Damon Road did not reach its purpose at all. Because if it's a truck coming down Damon Road trying to take a left-hand turn into the industrial park, they get no left-hand single. They sit there forever. And a lot of them smarten up. And instead, I think, besides their GPS being the problem, come around. And even coming out of the industrial park to take a right, they have, I know this is traffic and stuff, but those lines are too close. If, if somebody's in that lane on Damon Road to go left, a tractor trailer can't come out and take her. I backed up for one yesterday. But anyway, so, and I know that's hopefully all temporary anyway, once they redo everything else. And a couple other things. Um, one's by Ryan. I've done my best to reach out to people and provide a forum for discussion on this topic. One from Coca-Cola that says they worked on collaborative with neighborhood groups and city states. Check your calendars, both of you, because it's been a long time. It's been a few years since we sat and met with Coca-Cola or anybody about this. So, um, yeah. And um, I do have an interesting um, picture from Amazon down in Connecticut. They actually have a sign underneath the Amazon deliveries that says, ignore your GPS. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next up, Cindy, Cindy Cochin, please. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Cynthia Cochin. I live at 10 Day Avenue, and I've had several unpleasant incidences with uh, trucks and the vibration. The most recent one was almost a year ago in the middle of the night. I heard something moving around, hoping it wasn't anybody. But there on the floor was my ceiling and my downstairs unit. So I wrote a letter to City Hall and said, I'd like you to help me pay for this. I had an estimate of $2,000 for it. And as we found out later, this front stairs were the pointing was falling out. <clears throat> So I got a response saying, we don't insure for that purpose. So I said, well, why don't you check other purposes like grants or maybe the almoners would like to give me $2,000. Anyway, I called back to check on it and this mail boy said, we haven't done anything because if you think the vibration from the trucks caused that to fall, then you go find the truck make them pay for it, quote, unquote, exactly the response I got from City Hall. I didn't get any help. The city uh, 43 counselor would come and look at the ceiling on the floor and help me. <coughs> so anyway, that's the story. It's, I uh, can see why nothing's been done. If that's a response that you get over a situation as serious as that, because it's the second time I've had to pay $2,000. 10 years ago, I had another incident with the stairs actually walking away from the house and cracking. That was $500. And a fuse box walking away from the electrical connection. That was $1,600. So the vibration is causing a lot of this problem. Every night when I get home, I have to straighten out the artwork. So I think that um, a good move, a good one-step move, would be making Bay Avenue one-way street. I must say that I've noticed a reduction of trucks 
recently. However, the people who found Damon Road to Day Avenue into the industrial park are still using it, even though the construction is over with. Every, every morning, I can sit there at my front steps and zoom, zoom, five cars <coughs> tearing around the corner. And then I can count the timing of the light that's gonna change at the bridge, how long it takes to light, and then the next five come zooming around, and zooming around. So I mean fast, I don't know. Now that corner is where the bus picks up the school children. And I would be quite concerned about their safety, having watched these speeding cars come tearing around. So the one-way situation would resolve the problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's all we have signed up, but you're welcome to speak to the Just uh, identify yourself. <clears throat> My name is Michael Spink. I'm the 44 Lincoln Avenue. I've been in front of this committee before. Uh, and you've heard you, me. The deaf like ears. Just a, if you could say the part you address the council. Okay, I, Mayor Narkowitz, are you part of this committee? He's not part of the council. Okay, okay, because I've spoken to him before, and uh, this is lying on deaf ears because this has been going on for seven years. No one's done anything. It's getting worse. It's damaging my house, new house too. We have plenty of people and, and children on that on that uh, on that street, and uh, it's affecting our quality of life. And also speaking to the cops that just happened to come today because they had a put because there was an article in the newspaper. It is a noise violation. They come repeatedly at 8:15, at 10:15, at 1:15, at 6:15. It's pretty hard to fall asleep. That's illegal. You are not representing us. We will get someone else to represent us. You have to do something. Otherwise, we'll get someone else. We won't have to pay them. Thank you very much. Anyone else want to speak at this point? Hello, Council. I wasn't prepared to speak right now, but um. Can you, have, can you identify That's yourself? Yes, of course. Kenneth Munier, 46 School Street. Um, I've been like running around um, and once in a while I run into the mayor and I'm not here to speak about um, three, four, five paper bags at Big Y, Walmart, CVS, anywhere. They'll go three black. Um, I'm not here to talk about sidewalks on Damon Road. I'm not here to talk about the extremely easy fix up on that, um, what is it, six entrances of the uh, intersection. Uh, I guess I'll have to name them. Uh, Main State, Elm, West, South, Roads, Evans, I don't know. Um, extremely easy things. I understand I've been told that it's, it's a state matter. Um, but I would like to talk about um, the courts. Uh, this town is a county seat in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And the law library is bare. Is not stopped to where it should be. I'm talking about half the new federals. Most of the um, the shepherdizing has been completely removed, and um, <clears throat> the law librarian agrees with me. And I was a law librarian. I got a diploma for. Unfortunately, I was incarcerated at the time, but if I. 99% of me has changed since taking medication for my illnesses. Um, I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else interested in speaking? Oh, yes. Okay. So I'm going to 
close uh, public comment and then we'll proceed to call the roll and determine whether we have a quorum. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Councilor Goodwill. Yeah, that's Here. Councilor Carney. Here. Councilor Carney. Here. Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Lavar. Here. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Sheriff. Here. Councilor O'Donnell. Here. We do have a quorum. Um, so we're opening the meeting at this time. The first off, I have an announcement of public hearing. This is regarding a poll petition from National Grid to erect poll and wires. Along the long and under or across Round Hill Road. This is important to the provisions of Section 22, Chapter 166 of the General Laws Public Hearing. will be held here in the Council Chambers, uh, 212 Main Street, Northampton, at 7.05 p.m. on July 14th, 2016. This is on the petition of National Grid to erect poles and wires on, along, under, or across Round Hill Road. Now, we, uh, Here's what we all gathered for. This is, uh, I'm going to ask that someone move to open the public hearing regarding the city's operating budget for FY27. Motions made and seconded. All those in favor of opening the public hearing, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So this is in accordance with the Charter of Northampton, uh, Massachusetts Article 7, the Finance and Fiscal Procedures, uh, Section 7-4. Action on the operating budget, and this is the public hearing. And uh, public hearing is to be held to consider the proposed FY 2017 budget and the city council will hear all persons who wish to be heard thereon. Um, do you have a sign up sheet for that? Um, it's a blank. It's blank. Um, It is blank. It's confirmed. Yes. Not blank. Is there anyone present who would wish to speak in favor or opposition of any point or item on the budget for FY, the proposed budget of FY 2017? I'll accept a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion to close. Second. All those in favor of closing the public hearing, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Okay. Um, any one minute announcements by counselors? Oh, come on. <laughs> okay. Uh, communications, proclamations from the mayor. What? Proclamations are communications? Yes. Do you have any proclamations or communications? I do not. Okay, so this is going a lot faster than I thought. <laughs> Perfectly honest. Um, we now come up to the consent agenda. Um, the in, contained in, in the consent agenda is to approve the minutes of the department budget hearings. Uh, those are the minutes from May 26, 2016, and the minutes of June 1, 2016. Also, to approve the minutes of June 2, 2016. Those are the council minutes. Uh, and then uh, item 16.078. This is to approve appointments to various committees, and they all come with positive recommendations from City Services uh, from the June 7, 2016 meeting. And the appointments are Board of Health. This is a reappointment of Joanne Levine. Oh, Levine, I'm sorry. Uh, the Central Business Architectural Committee. That's an appointment of Bridget Goggins and Melissa Fridlow. Um, Community Preservation Committee. It's a reappointment of Brian Adams. Um, Conservation Commission, the appointment of C. Mason Marin and appointment of J uh, Jason Perry. The Council on Aging, reappointment of Robert Montague. Uh, the Disability Commission, uh, reappointment of James Winston. Energy and Sustainability Commission, reappointment of Mary Biddle, Aiden Maynard, and Scott Silver. And the Planning Board, this is to move Dan Felton from associate member to the full member. Um, move to approve the consent. Motion made and seconded on the consent agenda. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. <laughs> so, and Hannah, uh, you were already approved, so you're locked. That's I, I forgot about that. So you're already you're you're already set, and the sash will be in the mail. So thank you for attending. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> We're going into recess for the Finance Committee, uh, where I pass the gavel on to the chairman of the Finance Committee.
Finance Committee, and that is Council Murphy here. They're moving right along tonight. We, we are. Now we're almost done. <laughs> Not by long. Not by long. Long. No. Uh, yes, so, excuse me. I thought Hannah was coming to our committee on Tuesday. City along services? with Judith Kemmerly. They're on schedule. They're on schedule? Hannah, I'm mistaken. So your, your um, appointment to the Disabilities Committee will be reviewed by the... Um, on Tuesday. On Tuesday. Okay. Or we'll also have another council meeting, so we'll see for that too. It's <laughs> one stop shopping on Tuesday. And it's on, and so there'll be a subcommittee meeting, and then it will go immediately to uh, the referral will go immediately to that council meeting that we're having a special council meeting, and you will be appointed then, in all likelihood, no guarantees, but I, I like your chances. So, sorry about the confusion. Uh, council Murphy, you have moving right along. Yes. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order as and to call our roll. Council Murphy. I'm here. Council Carney. Present. Council Barnes. All right, let's take up spending $84 million without public comment. Uh, order that the sum of $84,044,076, which is the full amount necessary for the fiscal year of 2017 general fund budget, which is July 1 to June 30, 2017, be appropriated for the purposes stated, provided that the appropriation for the Smith Vocational and Agricultural School shall be used solely for the purposes of meeting net school spending as defined by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and no funds so appropriated should be transferred to any account or expended for any purpose that would not be included in the calculation of net school spending. To meet this appropriation, um, $1,777,627 will be raised and appropriated from parking meter receipts uh, and reserve. 10,000 from Cemetery Perpetual Care Trust Fund, 5,000 from Cemetery Sale of Lots Receipts, $974,025 from Sewer Enterprise Funds, $692,167 from Water Enterprise Funds, $114,813 from Solid Waste Enterprise Funds, $268,422 from Stormwater Enterprise Funds, $5,000 from Wetland Filing Fees, $1,500 from waterway funds, $13,609 from Community Preservation Act administrative funds, $62,970 from energy rebates, $28,729 from the Reserve for Police Station Debt Service, and $80,094,277 will be raised and appropriated. We have a motion in finance. Second. Second. Um, Anybody from the administration want to comment on $84,044,076? Well, uh, again, you've um, received a copy of the general fund budget where we outline all the priorities that we've laid out um, across all the various general fund departments, um, as well as the enterprise fund uh, departments. Um, this budget, again, as we uh, talk about, it fits within the, um, the multi-year sustainability plan that we've laid out, um, where we've tried to, over the last several years, maintain uh, level of city services, um, be able to also you know, fund some other key capital projects, which are also included in this. Um, and again, uh, 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 make sure that we're continuing to provide the highest quality uh, services to our residents as well as uh, education to the students in our public schools. So um, this is the order that effectuates that and uh, the actual breakdown is in your uh, expenditure uh, chart both in the budget and then within each individual uh, uh, departmental budget which shows how the funds are spent. Mm -hmm. Any questions for the mayor from anyone? Hearing none, Comes, uh, comes well, I, 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 I want to point out that anyone watching at home that there were there were a series of budgetary hearings that uh, this was discussed at length. It's so it doesn't pass without a note. I mean, is is you mentioned uh, the absence of public comment? Mm -hmm. um, it's safe to assume assent sometimes from that, but not always. Um, we often hear about. Competing interests that uh, 
that's usually when we hear about budgetary items long past after the budget's been approved and voted. Uh, but the fact is, is I, 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 I want to go on record as saying that, and I didn't get an opportunity in those, in those budget hearings, I was away, but I know that many of you would participate in those discussions, and that, that I, I want to say that I, um, once again, my confidence is reassured in the, um, the mayor and his team, Susan Wright in particular, have crafted a budget that um, is a progressive uh, budget with vision. So that that in so and in keeping with the fact that in the mayor's promise there will be no overrides. The fact is there are no layoffs. There are no there we are not at the precipice of a physical crisis. A fiscal crisis. I'm sorry. Uh, or physical crisis. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> But the and that doesn't happen by accident. It happens by design and craft. And uh, I think it's it's appropriate to acknowledge and recognize that uh, um, the good work that's gone into this. And 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 this isn't done without public input. It's usually considering public's input throughout the course of the year relative to issues as the priorities are stated. It is disappointing not to have the public come speak to it, but I also understand it's a pretty meta document. It's also the most important thing that we vote on. It's one of the reasons that we are uh, elected is to provide oversight and to channel public input into the process. A, a budget is actually a moral document. It states your priorities. It, 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 it declares your priorities as a community. And as such, um, this at least conforms very well with my sense of ethos as, as, as I believe as, as it does for many of the people. Thank you. I yeah. just want to go on record saying thank you. Uh, thank you. And, um, and I guess I would add that you know that we there was a long stretch where we spent most of our time for most of the years I was on the city council. We would basically start with the premise that no zero percent increase. And so how do we how do we cut to to uh, to do that? Um, and so pretty much every year was an exercise in what could you cut, especially on the school side. I know many of my school committee colleagues were part of that process, and I was part of it when I first joined the school committee as chair. So, um, and, I, and I do spend a lot of time with my budget message, so for the public who don't want to read the whole document, and I think the budget message talks about this, but you know, um, it's also a testament to the community who, um, when presented back in 2013 with this multi-year plan, the override, um, that they were willing to support that um, pretty overwhelmingly. And I think one of the things we've tried to do is keep the promise of every year updating people on that plan, revising the plan, uh, building a budget around the plan. The plan is included, you know, front and center in the, um, in the budget document, which shows people our projections over the next five years. Um, and and, um, and we've also really strived to figure out ways to save money, to seek grants, to you know, be creative. And we do point out some of those measures in the budget document. Um, you know, we highlight some of the things we've done we're actually working with the council to refinance some of our our long-term debt, um, you know, re, re, uh, reissuing some of our bonds to save significant money. Um, the uh, the com combining of the treasurer and collector's office, which you know may seem like a fairly minor thing, um, but it has created not only improved customer service and efficiency, but it's also saving us um, uh, money as well. Um, so uh, so anyway, we're we're going to continue to strive to do that. And, um, and then I think if you do look through some of the individual um, budgets, particularly in the schools, I know you had um, you had Dr. Provost. Um, the schools have, are doing some um, exciting work, and you know they they really their administrative team in Northampton Public Schools spent a lot of time thinking about you know what what their priorities were, and in some cases they kind of reshifted some of their priorities um, uh, and and to focus on some things, some long-standing needs. For example, librarians in our elementary schools, which we've been without for you know about a decade or so. So they're slowly trying to, this, this budget puts two elementary school librarians back in place um, that will be shared across the four elementary schools, trying to expand preschool opportunity uh, through the school system. Um, and then some other exciting stuff around STEM. So, I want to be careful when I say it's just you know, level service. Um, there's level service, but we're also looking to do a 
in areas where we think there's opportunities, um, we're trying to make sure that we're uh, that we're investing in those. Um, as we've really talked about a lot, you know, we've been continuing to um, promote arts and culture, and um, it's a small department, but we are, you know, every year we've tried to increase our commitment to that, um, including there's a, a small increase. There was a small increase last year to try to support the fireworks for first night. This year we're putting some funding into Brian Foote's budget to help support the outdoor um, film uh, series that he's been doing around town. So. Where we think that there, so I just want to be clear. Where, like you said, it's, it's not just status quo. We're also trying to pursue a vision and, and make investments. I think the capital um, investments are really crucial as well, including the paving investments that we hear a lot about, um, as well as some of the equipment and IT investments that we're making. So anyway, appreciate it. You, you know, it's also worth noting that bond rating was improved. So th this is being done. It's it's worth noting that. Not only is this a steady, robust mm -hmm. budget, but the fact is it's also acknowledged that the process and the vision mm -hmm. is worthy of being awarded higher bond rating, which also allows you to refinance those debts that you were talking about. That also reduces additional pressure. And we've tried to stay. And that's one of been one of the pieces of discipline about staying within the plan because the plan also calls for rebuilding those reserves over time. Um, and there's been a that's been a concerted effort, and it's because of what we hear from the bond rating agency. So, um, uh, when I was sworn in, uh, when I took office, I don't know, 2012, I guess it was, we had an A plus rating. Um, we then moved up a couple of years later to double A rating, and so now we've achieved triple A rating. So I think that's a, a testament to the work that we've done over the last almost five years um, to try to uh, try to you know, have a plan uh, in terms of how we want to address our fiscal situation. So. Uh, I'd like to, to, to join in uh, being very proud to be associated with the, the budget document, which is a reflection of uh, the city's priorities. And I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a set of, uh, it's a set of priorities that I am proud to be associated with. And I'm very impressed with the combination of discipline and strategy and streamlining and efficiencies that, that, that has brought us to, to this point. I sat in on, on the review of the audit of the Finance Committee back a month or so ago. And that in combination with the upgrade and bond rating and in combination with what this budget is telling us about uh, extending this period of relative financial stability leaves me quite impressed and I, I, I choose to conclude that the, 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 the lack of comment to, is in many cases a reflection of, 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 of confidence uh, in, in, in the way the city's finances are being managed. And I would just add that as, a, as, as, as the newcomer on the council going through this for the first time, uh, I didn't digest every, every page of the document, but I spent a fair amount of time with it and the, 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 the budget message uh, in combination with opportunity to talk with department heads at a couple of budget hearings, uh, leaves me quite impressed with, with the process by which this was developed as, as well as the, the, the product itself. It's quite clear and understandable as a, as a budget document. I'm joining and adding my compliments. Gosling? I just also want to point out that in addition to the, some of the expenditures that are being made, um, on the revenue side, I think an important feature of the budget which I get, well, maybe it's kind of external to the budget, is uh, some relative economic growth in the city that has created new revenue uh, and expanded our tax base. And I don't want to put you on the spot, but if you care to comment on that, I think that's actually important when, you know, when we say you know, we, we want to provide a full description of our finances to people watching at home, um, they should know that there has been growth in Northampton, and then that has been to the benefit of the services we provide to people in the city. So yeah, and that's in the budget message. I, I the two reasons I cite that's one of them has been the, um, you know, when we built those original projections back in 2013, uh, we've come out of a period where new growth had been, you know, I think we, it was averaging in the 500,000 range or something like that, um, and we're generally pretty conservative in how we estimate new growth. Um, and, and over the last two or three years, it's been averaging 
you know, up in the 900s, approaching a million dollars. And that's a reflection of the strength of our economy. And that's, you know, that also ties into the bond rating, uh, which they recognize the new growth number. Um, and again, that's, that's economic activity that's putting uh, new, new uh, either housing or businesses on the tax rolls, which in hand is growing that revenue pie. That's really the only way um, with proposition, with the cap, you know, proposition two and a half to grow your tax base is new growth. Right. Um, so, and just, and related to that, I mean, for anyone thinking, well, we're fortunate to have uh, new growth now, mm -hmm. we may not always in the coming years, um, do you feel that our, our reserves have been built to the point where, if in the, you know, next year, it's a totally different picture for economic development. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, my feeling is you have built up in the budgets that we've adopted so, uh, reserves to weather you know those kind of storms, and that's one of the factors that contributes to the bond rating, for example. Yes, no, definitely our reserves are strong. The fiscal state sustainability, our stability reserve fund, which was specifically created in, in after the override, is there. And every year when we revisit the plan, we're we're deciding okay, because the original plan was it would last uh, you know basically give us three years, and then we basically have to. Uh, live off the money that we put away in right. reserve. We haven't had to touch that money. Right. We've been able to actually add to it. Um, so, and, and I will say, what uh, we're, we are, I think we're being conservative still, even in our new growth estimate yes. um, for next year, if you look in your budget, even though we've had a good year of 900,000, you know, we're doing five-year averaging. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think we're, what are we estimating for new growth for, for 17, 17? and we're using 600 and so, for sub So we're, we're trying to be safe. We're right. trying to err on the side of caution. Yeah. Um, I just think that's enormously important. Yeah. One of the, yeah. one of the uh, strongest features of the budget. So yeah. I'd rather, I'd, right. rather, I'd rather be $300,000 yeah. to the good than, than have to make up a $300,000 deficit. And as we're seeing right now play out in the state budget, um, there's a lot of instability <coughs> not just in Massachusetts, but nationwide in terms of <coughs> gains and other tax revenues coming in lower than anticipated. So anyway, thank you, Councilor. Councilor LeVar. Yes, um, I'll do this quickly. I think um, Councilor O'Donnell had answered my concerns about the economic growth, but I also want to thank you, Mayor, and also Susan Wright, Inland, and your staff, again, with the book that we have on the budgets, which is on the website, it's very, very thorough. And I also think that the budget hearings, which we attended, is very, very helpful for counselors in asking questions. And I know myself that I had some concerns about some of the, the budgets that were presented. And working with department heads is very helpful and working with your department also. Thank you, your department, for an excellent job on the budget book. Thank you, Council. The only other thing I would add, and again, I'm just sort of parroting the message a little bit, is the other component is we've also tried to find new revenue. So, um, you know, try to find resources of revenue. So, I, I, in my last budget message, I introduced the concept of the payment of the taxes program, which we've you know, implemented, pursued. Um, we view that as new revenue sources. We, we've, um, signed some other uh, great pilot agreements with local organizations, a host community agreement with the uh, medical marijuana dispensary, which is in the, in the uh, budget message. And we're gonna continue to try to seek uh, new revenue sources um, because the, the, you know, the basic problem here, and it's, you, know, you can read it in all the budget messages before this one, is just is the, the revenue expenditure equation. It's just challenging um, because our fixed costs continue to grow. This year, health insurance um, actually, if you look at the budget, we had a, a little bit of a spike in our health insurance costs. It was a significant increase. Um, and that's happening across the entire state. Um, and that continues to be a big driver. It was just at the at JFK talking about charter school tuition, which will go up again this year. Um, and it continues to be one of the top uh, two or three um, expenditures in our budget every year. So um, we're kind of boxed in. We, you know, it's a $100 million budget, but um, you know, when you look at the, um, you know, af what the actual new revenue is um, from from property taxes, that number is. He looks to Susan because he doesn't have it in his head. Um, uh, it is new new revenue from property taxes is one point three million at two and a half percent. Yeah. So 
you know, in a $100 million budget, we're working with about $1.3 million in new money. Um, about six or 700 of that had to go to health insurance uh, uh, costs yes. um, and retirement, which are sort of fixed costs that we have to pay. So it then it gives you sort of less and less new funds that you're working with. Um, health insurance was actually 800. Was 800, yes. So, um, uh, so, and then you have all the other obligations, uh, uh, either through retirement obligations, contractual obligations. So, um, it's a hundred million dollar budget, but because of the funding structure that we operate under, we're really talking about a, you know, a, a small amount of money that's, that we're working with in terms of um, uh, making the difference between uh, keeping all of our pro all of our departments uh, funded or not. So, in our schools. Councilor Barr, do you have another question? Yeah, just a quick one, Mayor. You talked about the charter schools and so forth, and we all know. I mean, there was a very well attended meeting last night on the lifting of the cap of charter schools. And I think that the taxpayers need to be really educated on the seriousness of this election in November, what it's going to cost us, the city, with what is going to happen here, with and if it is lifted and how much it's going to affect our budget, which I think there's great concerns. And hopefully as mayor, you will come forth to let the taxpayers know what is going to happen here, mm -hmm. because it's going to affect our budget very seriously, even though I think it's what, 200 and something students, 212 students that we have leaving. Yeah. And that the seriousness involved here is if it's approved, that this will be forever, forever. This cap will be forever. Well, the, uh, With the the potential of, increase. Exactly, yeah. forever. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, well, I mean, how is that going to affect us mm -hmm. in November? With our budget, we're gonna be approving this budget shortly. Mm -hmm. In November, this is voted on, when would that take effect if it wins? Uh, well, if it were to go into effect, there would be regulatory changes would be certified by the Secretary of State. I don't know if the legislature would have to act on it, but you know, the process of opening a charter school would take some time, take some time to go through that process. So I don't think um, 12 new charter schools will open immediately in November. There's a process that would happen. Oh, I understand that. Yeah. I was just concerned. Yeah, so we would, but it's definitely a concern. And if you look in the budget document, um, both in the budget message, um, in the, um, in the, in the back, we have uh, section on debt benefits we, insurance. Yeah, we have a section where we talk about it in the, in the back of the budget book. And you may remember when I did my um, joint meeting with the school committee and city council, we had several slides um, that are those are available on the website that really talk about the long range implications that, that this charter school issue has had on us in terms of the rising um, tuition costs every year. Um, and I, I make the point in our I made it last night, and I make it in my budget message that you know, we are um, we're estimating, uh, you know, as you said, 202 students, um, a little over 2.2 million after um, reimbursement um, in outgoing tuition, um, and that, and again, 202 students. Uh, on average, if you look at the superintendent's budget, we're spending only 1.7 million dollars on average for our elementary schools, um, which are serving 230 to 300. In some cases, uh, students. So, um, when you think about it in those terms, it's uh, it's um, it, you know it's concerning. And when you know, ask the superintendent, what could you do with two million dollars? You know, with two extra two million extra dollars on your budget, um, you know, we could have you know, music back in our elementary schools. We, could, we, would, we wouldn't have to share librarians in elementary schools. You know, we'd be you know, the schools would be able to do a lot of exciting things, a foreign language. Um, ironically. You know, that's the sort of vicious cycle, I think, is that, you know, as, as Mataloni talked about, you know, these sort of boutique charter schools that are opening um, in many ways because they're serving needs that are being stripped away from the public schools, you know, because we can't provide the music and the arts because we're losing funding. So, anyway, but I don't want to turn this into no, a, uh, thank you. a debate on that, so. Not Mark Kennedy. And, and while I'm not the uh, designated opiner of this body, as chairman of finance, I'd like to make a little comment on this. As you sure. know, I'm, I'm not the 
aggressive barometer of this body. I don't get all that excited about saving the world from plastic bags or how do we paint our crosswalks. But I do get excited about this as chairman of finance. And I would like to comment by saying I commend the mayor and the finance director for doing really good work with the resources they have and above and beyond that in the process raising our bond rating so that we do need to, to borrow money that we can do so under more advantageous terms. So my compliments to both of you for this budget. I've been finance chair for a while. I've been pretty involved in this in capital improvements. This really is a job well done. And then to the folks at home to say, you know, I didn't expect a lot of comment from the members of this body because we've been spending two months with this document. We've had chances to meet with department heads. We've had chances to satisfy ourselves that the budget is in fact sound and something we can vote for. I am a little disappointed that we're about to spend $84 million without public comment. And I wish I had your confidence that it was a result of the consent of the governor, the governor and not their ambivalence. Uh, but please remember, during the next year, if your constituents complain about anything, they weren't here. You know, they, they, they didn't come and deal with us this evening and talk about it. And I'm very disappointed about that. Very disappointed about that. So with that said, all in favor of uh, you, Council. Well, Council. Fact, the mayor made the point that I was going to make, which was that I, I thought it was striking in his message that you talked about how we spend more than an equivalent of an elementary school um, when with sending uh, the other children out to charters. And, and that being said, um, I feel like the fact that there is new programming going into our schools this year and um, librarians and and the new things that are in the budget are, are cannot it can't be overemphasized how impressive a job that is that the superintendent and finance director there have done it in the thing that happens. So. Um, so with that said, in finance, all in favor of spending $84 million, please say aye. 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 All right. And now we're going to go through the various other components of the budget and the and the if you're here for a planning board meeting, the planning board is upstairs in the second floor of City Hall. This is a city council meeting. So. Oh, okay. Thank you. For a moment, right? That's how many people are interested in the budget. <laughs> <laughs> not so. They've been listening, they've been watching, and they've been your call. <laughs> I'm not that lucky. And then I apologize. In the council meeting, we don't take comments, so sorry about that. So the next uh, is 16095 relative to the solid waste enterprise budget, order that the sum of $588,450, which is the full amount necessary for the fiscal year 2017 solid waste enterprise fund budget, be appropriated for the purposes stated, and to meet said appropriation, $399,000 to be raised from solid waste receipts, and $189,450 is to be made available from the undesignated fund balance of the solid waste Enterprise fund. Do we have a motion, science? Make a motion. Second. Second. Any questions of uh, the mayor and the finance director? Do you have any comment? Uh, not really. I mean, this is a uh, you know the, the um, uh, solid waste enterprise fund has been the shrinking enterprise fund, um, and um, and obviously we're continuing to operate the transfer station and do all of the uh, work that we need to do to maintain the uh, landfill. Monitoring and post closure activities. So, uh, this represents, I think, um, yeah, what we need to do to keep that, um, that enterprise fund uh, funded. And, and there's no increases uh, proposed in this in terms of fees or anything like that. It's a fairly static uh, budget. So, yeah, very good. Any other questions? All in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 All right, the next is 16096. This is relative to the sewer enterprise fund budget. Order that the sum of $6,271,872, which is the full amount necessary for fiscal year 2017 sewer enterprise fund budget, be appropriated for the purpose stated and to meet said appropriation, $6,271,872 is to be raised from sewer receipts. We have a motion. Make a motion. Second. Second. Any questions on this one? Do you have any comments? Uh, no, I think you know we obviously had a quite a lengthy um, public debate about the water and sewer rates, and um, and these next two enterprise fund budgets reflect the, um, uh, the, the the spending priorities and capital priorities that we outlined when we were coming to you to uh, set the water and sewer rates. 
So the revenues that you're talking about is revenue uh, projected to be you know, generated by those um, by those rates. I, I was going to point out to counselors as well, you've probably seen it in there, but we also have, as we started doing last year, provided um, you know, provided a detailed summary of the indirect costs for all of the enterprise funds, which are in here, um, just to show people how those indirect costs play out. And, and those have continued to be kind of a shrinking, um, uh, those have continued to shrink over time. Um, and you can see sort of detailed listing of those so, in the back. Um, so you have a concert question? Yeah, Mayor, could you just explain the sewer debt part of it at four hundred and forty five thousand eight hundred and sixty four. Um, I believe that's debt service. So it's interest and principal and interest on loans that we've taken out for the treatment plan. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, any of the debt that's that's borrowed in the enterprise fund, the debt service comes out of the enterprise fund. So that would be debt supported uh, funding. So in finance. All in favor of positive recommendation say aye. 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 Thank you. Um, the next is water enterprise budget. Order that the sum of seven million four hundred and sixty-three thousand seven hundred and sixty-eight dollars, which is a full amount necessary for the fiscal year 2017 water enterprise fund budget, be appropriated for the purposes stated and to meet said appropriation, six million seven hundred and eighty-seven thousand two hundred and forty-five dollars is to be raised from the water receipts and six million. $76,523 shall be transferred from the Water Stabilization Fund. We have a motion. Make a motion. Second. Any questions on this one? Hearing none, in finance. All in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Okay. The next one is the Stormwater Enterprise Fund. Order that the sum of $1,957,558, which is the full amount necessary for the fiscal year 2017 storm water enterprise fund budget, be appropriated for the purposes stated, and to meet said appropriation, $1,957,558 is to be raised from the storm water receipts. Do we have a motion on this? Second. Okay. All right. Any questions on this one? Council. Um, just on the indirect costs uh, for the stormwater enterprise fund. Okay. Uh, I, this is probably a typo. I just noticed that it's $1 off from the general order to appropriate the FY budget, FY17 budget, which we already voted on, the finance voted on. That number is um, $268,422. Okay. And this ordinance, uh, this order is um, Are you following $1 this order? less, so. so. Which order has which, what two documents are you looking at? I'm looking at the, you know, the first order that finance voted on to appropriate the 84 million um, as a figure for what I assume is the indirect cost to the stormwater enterprise fund. That's $1 higher than, is on this order and is in the budget, um, the budget documents. Oh, this one. So, so, so. Yeah, the, the, the 422 is correct. Okay. The four and then, but is there another order you're referring to, or is it just in a? Um, well, we have an order now, and it's 421. Yeah. I don't know if it's important it's to change. It's just a rounding thing. Around and, here. Yeah, it's fine because we'll we'll be taking 268, 422 from there. Okay. And the bond will only be one dollar. Right. It's one dollar. Right. It's not gonna. It's not gonna make any difference. All right. So I was trying to say this. Very astute to notice. No, no, that, no. no. So. I was just just. Thank you. Yeah, the rounding thing sometimes doesn't always. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The only thing I would note on this is, again, you know, we made, um, uh, you know, we, we made the uh, uh, commitment that we would be keeping this fund at or below two million dollars, um, and um, actually, the the fund is going down slightly, about seventeen thousand uh, dollars this year, and you can see on page eleven. Um, there's a quick summary of the rates, and the rates will go down slightly to account for that um, $17,000 gift um, in terms of what we need for projects. Um, you know, in some cases where abatements have been granted or things like that, there's some reshifting, but it's pretty much this, this uh, new utility is sort of remaining um, static as it was adopted originally. So, but again, we are, we are um, you know, you've seen some of the work that's been done around the city. Um, the work that's been done on the levy uh, system um, and more three particularly um, and some of the other uh, stormwater projects that we're designing um, so we are advancing
financing it. Um, I was uh, just at a meeting um, of mayors uh, in New Bedford uh, with the commissioner of DEP and of course the, um, the MS4 permit that we were all talking about two or three years ago um, is now a real permit uh, that's been issued by the EPA. Um, and so many cities and towns are beginning to now scramble and grapple with how are we going to pay for all these new requirements that EPA wants us to do. Um, and of course, these were the things we were talking about coming down the road um, a few years ago um, and we were sort of planning for. Uh, and so I think we're going to be in a good position to try to comply with these new regulatory requirements. Um, on the stormwater side, we were also trying to comply with the flood control. Um, so that's just sort of a comment that um, I know that some of my colleagues in other communities, particularly some of the older Seaport communities, you know, are very concerned about the regulations and how they're going to figure out how to adapt to them. Um, so again, we're talking about the FY17 stormwater uh, you know, enterprise fund, but again, I just give kudos to our city for um, sort of being forward looking and knowing that these, uh, these challenges and regulatory changes were coming down the road and we were, and so we're prepared to begin to try to address them. Okay, thank you. So, finance, all in favor of a positive recommendation on stormwater, please say aye. Aye. Very good. And I have to beg your indulgence on this one because this one has teeny weeny print. <laughs> so I'm gonna give this a shot. These are the revolving funds and there's a bunch of them. I'm gonna read uh, the fund name and the dollar amount. If you have questions about any one, because there's a bunch of them, uh, we can get into more details. But uh, upon the recommendation of the mayor, ordered that the city council authorizes the following revolving funds in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53, E and a half for fiscal year 2017. The receipts received but not expended in fiscal 2017 should be carried over to fiscal 2018. If these funds are reauthorized for fiscal 2017 by the council, no further appropriations shall be made in excess of the balances of the fund or shall total expenditures for the fiscal year exceed the annual spending limit as noted for the fund. Um, so these are the funds and, and the amounts. Energy and Sustainability Revolving Fund, $150,000. Hazmat Revolving Fund, $85,000. DPW Public Works Construction Services Revolving Fund, $85,000. Senior Services Transportation Revolving Fund, $75,000. Senior Services Gift Shop Revolving Fund, uh, $90,000. Um, right, so the Activity Fund is $90,000. Uh, Senior Services Gift Shop Fund is $20,000. Senior Services Food Service Revolving Fund is $50,000. Senior Services Publications Revolving Fund is $50,000. Senior Trips and Travel Revolving Fund uh, is $100,000. Athletic League Fees Revolving Fund is $230,000. JFK Family Aquatic Center Fund is $120,000. Northampton Public Schools Transportation Revolving Fund is $225,000. Smith Vocational High School Farm Revolving Fund is $100,000. Tourism Directional Sign Program Revolving Fund is $20,000. Public Health <coughs> Nursing Program Revolving Fund is $20,000. The James House Revolving Fund is $75,000. The Sharps Program Disposal Revolving Fund is $50,000. The Fire Alarm Monitoring Program Revolving Fund is $60,000. And the DPW Reuse Committee Revolving Fund is $15,000. Do we have a, a motion on this in finance? Second. Does anybody have a question on any of these various revolving funds? Again, they let the departments collect funds for certain purposes and then spend those funds for that purpose um, on a revolving basis as long as they don't exceed the total without coming here. <coughs> there are there any questions on any of these? Then uh, all in favor of a positive recommendation to finance, please say aye. 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 The next one is 16101. This is to appropriate capital projects for the 16. 2016 general fund under designated fund balance, so we're spending some of our extra money. Order that the following capital projects be appropriated from the FY 2016 general fund undesignated fund balance, otherwise known as free cash. Information technology, integrated municipal data systems, 
$10,000. Fire Rescue Department, uh, communication equipment, $32,550. Police Department, replaced tactical equipment, $67,500. Northampton $67, Public Schools, district-wide security measures, $40,000. Northampton Police Department, outfit the firing range, $60,000. DPW Fuel Depot, $304,133. DPW Equipment Replacement, $385,481. And DPW The Clement Street Bridge, $50,000 for a total of $1,049,664. Do we have a motion on this? Make a motion. Second. Any question about any of these expenditures? I think we went over them already in the capital improvements budget. <coughs> Hearing no questions, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Next is 16102. Again, appropriation to appropriating for capital projects. Order that the following capital projects be appropriated from the receipts reserved for appropriation from the parking fund. Drainage system upgrades at the garage, $90,000. Downtown parking wayfinding, $70,000. Garage structural repairs, uh, the fourth phase, $200,000. That's a total of $360,000 from the receipts reserved for appropriation from the parking division. Any uh, motion? A motion. Second. Okay. Any questions on this one? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? 16103, to appropriate capital projects from receipts reserved for appropriation from the sale of land. Order that $160,867 be appropriated from the receipts reserved for appropriation from the sale of land account to the citywide fueling depot project. Do we have a motion of finance? A motion. Second. Second. Any questions? Uh, Council? Uh, uh, you, you could have lodged this with the description of the project. Yeah. Um, some of you may know. Uh, when we, um, when one of the major items identified when they were doing an entire look at the DPW and the DPW facility um, was the need to replace the fuel depot, um, which is uh, which is basically the city's gas station. Um, we, it's where we um, receive fuel um, for our vehicles, and it's where we um, store it, and where everything from police vehicles to DPW vehicles to you know, any all, any and all city vehicles. Um, get their fuel and so um, it's an aging system and the tanks have a certain life to them and so it's, it was a project that had originally been incorporated into the um, into the larger uh, facility project that we've had to delay um, but we feel that it's of a critical nature we want to move forward and we can move forward with it separately uh, with the uh, fueling depot so this is some of the um, initial money for that particular project. And the land acquisition? No, it's a sale of land account. So when we, okay. when we sold, um, actually when we sold um, land from the water department on Prospect Street, right. um, this was funds that were put into a sale of land account. So we are, um, so we're going to redesignate them for another DPW related activity, the, the uh, fuel depot. Yeah. That's sort of been our practice is that, you know, when we we use money from the former sale of the Masonic Street Fire Station to pay for a fire truck, and so we try to sort of keep it um, keep it in the, in the department keep family, family. Yeah, keep it in the family. Uh, so that's what that's what the sale of land piece is from. But I, I remember there was discussion about the fuel and depot relative to things like an aging infrastructure on the system and, the, and mm -hmm. security. Among exactly. Other things. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on this one? Hearing none, all in favor of positive recommendation, please say aye. Aye. Okay, good folks. Next is 16104. Ordered that $25,275 and 26 cents remain, uh, remaining from the uh, old community policing grants and $25,843 and 23 cents remaining in the police dare program gift account and $544 and 87 cents in the police shooting range gift account for a total of $51,663.36 be used for the development of the firing range for the police department. Do we have a motion on this one? Make the motion. Second. Any questions on this one? Yes. Please. 
Mayor, at this um, $51,663.36, will this be the final stage of them working on this? Because they've been waiting for such a long time to have the money to do this. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah, so it's a, necessity. Yep, it's, um, this was one of the, unfortunately, this was one of the aspects of the new station that had to be kind of value engineered out of the final project because we couldn't afford um, when the, the project got delayed by two years, and so the pricing went up, and there were also some design changes and some code changes. So uh, the, the shell for the firing range was built, the coffin, as it's called, um, and now we have to do the um, actual HVAC air handling and the lead collection system and then all the other outfitting of it. So I think it's a two-phase project. We have some funding. Actually, we're, we're funding. Yeah. We're funding 160, it's on um, yeah. page 188 of your book, but we're funding 160, so small, 163, 545 out of, and 50 of it's coming from cash capital, and 60 is for free cash. And yeah. 53 is, cut, or whatever is coming from. Is coming from this order, so there's three different funding sources, and then there's another piece that we're paying out of the police department budget for yeah. this year, which is for some software. That so yeah. we'll pretty much. We think we're going to be able to cover it all in this fiscal year, um, and it's going to you know they're they're already planning to work with some of the HVAC contractors to, to, to get the work done. How, um, when will it be completed? Um, I don't know if we actually have a contract yet with anybody on that. I know they've been doing estimates. They've been, they've been working on it. They haven't been able to sign any contracts yeah. until yeah. this is these But obviously the funding would be available beginning July 1st when this budget passes. So um, I know that they're looking forward to doing that. And it will save, we will save some training expense in terms of they have to hire the, mm -hmm. they have to hire a van to come in to do the shooting um, and or some of the stuff they have to do. I know outdoors in your ward, which I'm sure you'll be pleased yes. to be moving indoors. Very. So, yeah. I just want to say one last thing. Yeah, they mine too. Part of the money for this, you will see in the cash capital order that you're going to get in July. The cash capital is actually out of the 2017 budget, so we have to actually wait until 2017 to appropriate that because it's within the operating budget. Yeah. So, um, so you're going to see another order come forward at your July meeting that will take another 60 out of cash capital. So by then, we will have put the multiple funding sources together for this. Mm -hmm. Councilor Klein, did you have a question? I just wanted to ask, I, I don't know too much about the history about this, but I'm wondering, is this actually saving money from um, using the gun club as the, in the past for shooting practice and so forth? What's the, can you give a little bit of history about the project? Yeah, well, it's gonna it's it's um it will save money in, in a number of different ways. Not only having to rent outdoor outside facilities, also having to rent the um, they have a specialized basically shooting range on a truck that comes in. Um, and then the other aspect of it is the actual scheduling of officers to um, to be able to do their training and how that's uh, scheduled and how um, that can be worked into their working schedule as opposed to a trailer that's coming up one day or a couple of days and having to coordinate all that. So okay. it's, um, it's, gonna, it's gonna have savings for us. And, uh, and again, it was part of the original design of the, of the police station. Uh, but again, when we had to make some cuts, uh, cost cuts to be able to finish the project, we sort of mothballed this part of it. Um, we built the superstructure, it was all built, it's there, it's actually full of you know, boxes and bicycles and things like that, but um, it was fully built, um, but now we just have to outfit it with the infrastructure. So, I think what Chief Casper told us the problem is with overtime, because with the with the facility in-house, they can train people coming and going from shift. shift. Yeah. But if they have to do it with a specialized trailer, they have to bring them in on overtime to teach them. Exactly. So it shows up in the personal services budget because you've got to call somebody in every day off to train when the trailer's there. Or if the building is equipped, they can yeah. just do it at the beginning or the end of a shift yeah. when they're on regular time and, you continue, and, and yeah. continue to do it so until they get through everybody because they have to certify them more often now. I think it's twice a year they have to qualify, rather once a year. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to schedule them without overtime if you have to rent equipment. So. Right, okay. and you're correct, yeah. Also, like with Ryan Road School, 
we I worked very carefully with the superintendent plus the principal at Browning Road of the training that was going to happen at the Royal <coughs> Range and we worked out a schedule because of the small children and so forth like that and hearing it there was over 21 police officers at that range shooting. I just had a question about the $25,000 um, funding that's coming from old community policing grants. Mm -hmm. I was just curious about that. Is that just grants that we can no longer use for policing or is it just sort of spare change? Yeah. These are, yeah. These, are, these are grants that have probably been on the books for more than 10 years and our independent auditor suggested that okay. we use them and use them on a police department just related expense and that's that was the plan. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do you remember that federal funding after September eleventh was withdrawn for policing and then reinvested in homeland security up on police departments and consequently while there's still the practice of community policing the funding of community policing is not was not a priority. <coughs> so any further questions on this one? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation. Can I please say aye? Aye. aye. Um, the next one is 16105, Windows at the Library. Order that $100,000 or such other sums <coughs> may, may constitute the entire balance in an old account set aside for Memorial Hall building renovations be appropriated to be used for architectural plans and specifications for retrofitting replacement of windows at Forbes Library and development of engineering plans for an HVAC solution for the special collections room in the Calvin Coolidge Library at Forbes Library. I have a motion on this one? Make a motion. Second. Second. All right. Any questions on this one? Uh, Councilor. Yeah, I, I had a question for the for the for the mayor on this. I'm 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 aware there's been some architectural work related to replacement windows undertaken by the by the trustees at the risk of getting into matters pending in, in, in the litigation. I wonder if you could just explain why this is necessary given that there's been some work already already separately done in this area. Yeah, there was some there was some um, schematic level work done um, in terms of looking at because you know so whenever you do a project there's schematic which is like um, conceptual level but when you have to go out to bid you have to have this full construction design uh, work done. Um, and so there were schematics done quite a while ago. Um, and then uh, similarly, uh, we have some conceptual schematics for the HVAC system uh, that was done when the city did all of its energy audits of all city buildings. Um, this was one that was identified. So we have some schematic work. But to actually go out to bid um, and prepare construction drawings, um, uh, because of the uh, cost of the project, uh, we will we do have to um, do a bid for designer services and, um, and and work from that. So there was some early schematic work done, and that actually was used by Central Services to develop uh, this RFP. Um, and in fact, um, uh, contrary to published reports, um, David Pomerantz uh, met with. Uh, the library director and their facilities person um, reviewed the RFP with them, um, uh, actually toured the facility with them. Um, they did a, when, when the uh, bids were, when the RFP was issued, they, um, they hosted kind of a, a, a site visit for interested contractors at the library with library staff and took them on a tour. Um, so we've worked very collaboratively with library staff on this to develop this RFP. Um, but again, um, there were some schematic drawings done, um, but those are not, um, those would not uh, be something that we could use for the bidding. So that's why we, have, we believe, and, um, and, and I've asked, and again, not to get into other matters, but you know, I think it's important uh, because these are going to be two significant um, uh, construction projects the facility, but I wanted to have central services um, be uh, sort of 
lead the actual bidding process. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, along that line, I don't know to what extent you can answer this, but depending on the determination of the pending suit, does that affect the status of this process at all? Um, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, again, uh, you're you are you're elsewhere in the budget. You're appropriating money for a voice over internet system that's being installed in the library, and it's being installed, you know, through, it's being led by IT, and it's being, uh, and IT's the one, we're getting it out from the city, and we're installing it in the library. So, um, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, I've heard that this project is somehow different than anything else, but it's, it's consistent, I think, with what we should be doing. Um, again, I don't want to get into that matter necessarily, okay. other than to say that the, the city is responsible for the repair of the building. Um, so I believe we're carrying out our responsibility. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Next is 16106. For the West Farm Park Street Cemetery. In order that the sum of $37,300 is appropriated from the Cemetery Trust and Income Fund to be used towards cemetery preservation plans for the West Farms and Park Street Cemeteries. I have a motion of finance? Make a motion. Second. Second. Okay. Any questions on this one? Hearing none, all in favor of positive recommendation? Please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Next is 16107, uh, projects from the Capital Stabilization Fund. Order that the sum of $344,359 is appropriated from the Capital Stabilization Fund for the following projects. A fire rescue department, update a learning system, $164,840. DPW equipment replacement, $179,519 for a total of $344,359. We have a motion on this one? Second. Second. Any questions on this one? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive aye. recommendation, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, next is 16116. Order that where is chapter 30B of the Massachusetts General Laws requires the city council approval for contract terms exceeding three years, and whereas multi-year contracts up to six years can maximize the impact of school funds spent on instructional materials. Now therefore be ordered that all school districts of the city of Northampton are authorized to enter into contracts for instructional materials for a period not to exceed six years. Do we have a motion on this one? Motion. Second. Second. And the mayor has a comment. No, other than to say we've come to you before, I know for Smith folk, um, as well as some other NPS. Uh, this is just to allow um, the school department, there's a memo from the superintendent to be in there. Uh, they want to purchase some uh, new textbook systems, um, and there's greater savings by purchasing them with a six year contract. Um, and so they, uh, because Mass General Law requires a vote of the council and approval of the council and mayor to exceed the three-year contract, that's why we're coming to you for this vote. Um, but there is a memo from the superintendent, and this is supported by the um, by the school committee. Are there any other questions on this one? All in favor of a positive recommendation of budget, please say aye. 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 All opposed. The next one is 16117, fixing the cafeteria. Whereas the city council appropriated $35,000 for repairs to the Leeds Elementary School skylight and window repair project as part of the FY15 capital plan. And whereas the repairs that were made were not as extensive as originally estimated, it remains $21,241 in that account. Whereas plan renovations to the Ryan Road School cafeteria are part of the city's five-year capital improvement plan, and are tentatively scheduled for FY18 capital plan. And in order to do the renovation during the summer of 17, architectural plans need to be prepared. Now therefore be ordered that the $21,241 be reprogrammed from the balance of the Lee School Skylight and Window Repair Project for the purposes of preparing architectural plans for the upcoming renovation of the Ryan Road School cafeteria. So we have a motion to buy it. Motion. Second. Uh, well, Councilor Labarge will be pleased to know that um, we have we have identified in the FY um, in the FY18 capital plan uh, a renovation of the cafeteria at Ryan Road. Uh, so what we're hoping to do is get a start on the design work 
Um, so for this upcoming fiscal year, so we have some unused funds from this uh, skylight and window repair project. I would like to reallocate them um, uh, to the purpose, as I was just discussing with Councilor Bidwell, of, um, of getting all the design and construction drawings um, uh, put together so we can go out to bid. So we want to, we want to really be prepared um, to have that, that project move forward um, when we get into the FY18 capital year. Yes, and I want to thank you, Mayor, because this is in dire need. And I know that the students deserve this, all the young youths in there, and the teachers and that, and it needs to be done. And I'm so happy about this. Any other questions? All in favor of the little kids getting into the cafeteria, please say aye. 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 Close that. So now for finance, we're moving on to a street. Whereas a petition has been duly filed to the layout and acceptance of bottom drawers of public way, and whereas the petition has been referred to the Planning Board and the Public Works Commission, formerly known as the Board of Public Works, and whereas the Public Works Commission has held a duly noticed public hearing on the petition to lay out and accept the public way, and whereas the Public Works Commission has recommended laying out and accepting bottom roads as a public way. Now, therefore, it be ordered that the City Council authorizes the acquisition by gift, purchase, eminent domain, or otherwise of an easement in and over parts of the land shown as bottom road on the plan entitled Plan of Land in the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, Hampshire County, surveyed in the City of Northampton dated March 11, 2015, for the purposes of laying out, establishing, and accepting public ways thereon. Further, that the City Council hereby lays out, establishes, and accepts as a public way, the parcels to be acquired here under. And no further, and further that no damages shall be payable as a result of any taking authorized herein, and that no betterment shall be assessed as a result of laying out, establishing, and accepting such public way. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Second. Okay. Any questions? I think we talked a lot about bottom drug. I know. Oh, yeah. Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance? Please awesome. say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Um, moving on to 16.119 regarding uh, Senior Center fund expenditures. Order that the following expenditures from the Senior Center Services Gift Fund be approved. $2,600 for the purchase and installation of mirrors for the walls of the fitness center and $1,200 for canopies to be constructed and installed for two mini sale merchandise kiosks or carts. We have a motion on this one? Make a motion. Second. Second. Any discussion on this one? No. All in favor of a positive recommendation, invite us. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 16120. Feasibility study at the LEED School. Order that the City of Northampton appropriate the amount of $40,000 for the purposes of paying costs of a roofing replacement schematic design feasibility study for the Leeds Elementary School located at 20 Florence Street in Northampton, Massachusetts a school serving public school students in grades kindergarten through fifth grade, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and for which the City of Northampton may be eligible for a grant from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, set amount to be expended under the direction of the Northampton School Building Committee. To meet these appropriations, the City of Northampton uh, City Council, with the approval of the Mayor, will appropriate the necessary funds from funds remaining in an account entitled Leeds Roof Membrane Project. The City of Northampton acknowledges that the Massachusetts School Building Authority's grant program is a non-entitlement discretionary program based on need as determined by the MSBA and any costs the City of Northampton incurs in excess of any grant approved by and received from the MSBA shall be the sole responsibility of the City of Northampton. Do we have a motion? Second. Second. Any questions on, on this one? Hearing none, oh, the mayor, do you have a comment? Or? Uh, no, no, just, just saying that you may recall we did uh, two of these projects last year through MSBA, um, and we're, this is the feasibility part of it, but again, uh, we would stand to receive about, I think, 56% uh, reimbursement from the state for these two roof projects. So, um, and it's through the other part of the roof that we weren't able to do during the last project, as well as bridge street roof. So, there's two orders coming. Um, and this is their, their language that we have to use as part of the process, and the school committee will be adopting a similar resolution. Any other questions for the mayor on the Lead Street roof? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Moving on to 16.121, 
Same thing for the Bridge Street School. Order that the City of Northampton appropriate the amount of $40,000 for the purpose of paying costs of a roof replacement schematic design feasibility study for the Bridge Street Elementary School located at 2 Parson Street, Northampton, Massachusetts, a school serving public school students grades kindergarten through fifth grade, including the payment of all costs incidental related here to and for which the City of Northampton may be eligible for a grant from the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Set amount to be expended under the direction of the Northampton School Building Committee to meet this appropriation. The Northampton City Council, with the approval of the mayor, will appropriate necessary funds from funds remaining in an account entitled Ryan Road Roof Membrane Project. The City of Northampton acknowledges that the MSBA grant program is non-entitlement discretionary program based on need as determined by the MSBA. Any costs to the City of Northampton incurred in excess of any grant approved or and received from MSBA shall be the sole responsibility of the City of Northampton. We have a motion on this one. Make a motion. Second. Okay, second. Any questions for the mayor on this one? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? This is 16122. This is to authorize the acquisition of two parcels of land located on the east side of Haydenville Road in Waypoint. Order that whereas the city of Northampton owns a surface water drinking supply in the towns of Happy, Waitley, and Williamsburg, surrounded by watershed land owned by both the city and private property owners, and whereas in the interest of the city, to acquire privately held parcels within this watershed as they become available for sale to protect its drinking water supply. And whereas certain parcels of land within the watershed are available for acquisition, and it is in the interest of the city to acquire the parcels for watershed protection. Now, therefore, be it ordered that the city council authorizes the acquisition by gift, purchase, eminent domain, or otherwise. Uh, the fee interest in two parcels of land located on the east side of Haydenville Road, Waitley, Mass., as follows. Uh, and then there's two descriptions, I'm going to not read the whole descriptions, but one of parcel B is shown on a plan entitled Plan of Land of Whitney Mass owned by Joseph Pivens, dated April 30th. Uh, one of them is the Pivens property. Parcel C on that plan is land of Whitney Mass owned by also Jovis, uh, Joseph Pivens. Uh, and that parcel is 4.121 acres. The previous one is also 4.421 acres. The acquisition is for the purpose of sanitary protection of the Mountain Street Reservoir, part of the City of Northampton's water supply. The parcel shall be held in the custody and control of the Department of Public Works. Further, that no appropriation is necessary for the acquisition of the easement authorized herein is as much as sufficient funds for this acquisition. Acquisition have been appropriated in the Water Enterprise Fund for land. So, uh, we have a motion on this one. A motion. Okay, the mayor's going to speak to this. So we put a graphic up on the map which uh, shows you where these two parcels are located. Um, and again, you can see the land in green, which is all of our other existing uh, watershed uh, uh, land that the city has acquired. Um, you can also see that that, uh, that um, black line, which actually shows the actual watershed protection zone. Um, this, these were two parcels that were identified as part of the city's ongoing effort um, to, to uh, acquire uh, these very important uh, watershed protection lands around our reservoirs. Um, actually, something we won an award for uh, last year for our efforts in that regard. Um, interestingly, we applied to uh, DEP uh, this year um, for uh, a grant uh, a drinking water supply protection grant for FY2016. Um, and initially, um, indications were we were not going to get the grant. Um, and then last week, we received a call and said, um, Would you still like that grant? <laughs> and, uh, they said, You will get the grant, but you have to close by June 30th. Um, so they um, basically gave it to us on uh, whatever time they notified us. Uh, <coughs> Luckily, your June 16th meeting had been postponed because we wouldn't have had another meeting until July. So actually, it was somewhat fortuitous that that happened uh, because uh, we would have we didn't have a meeting coming up. So um, so anyway, this will essentially um, we'll be purchasing these two parcels uh, for uh, ninety thousand dollars each. Um, the DEP will be uh, reimbursing us for. Uh, 1775000 of the total purchase. Again, we have to do this, um, and we have to have 
this document and then all the other contracts and closing documents ready for a closing. Uh, uh, and so that's why we're requesting two readings. Um, the, uh, you know, these are critical parcels. The DPW supports this. Uh, Nicole Sanford, our um, water uh, protection engineer, um, uh, has scouted this out. And the funds have already been appropriated, and you've already appropriated funds for this um, these types of acquisition. Um, so we don't have to appropriate any new funds, and obviously having the underwriting of the state will uh, uh, is a bonus. So, mm -hmm. so that's why we're coming to you, and that's why we're asking for two readings, um, so that we can get all this paperwork in time for our closing sometime next week. Councilor Bar. Yes, um, I was curious, Mayor, of uh, how come there was not a price on here and what we were paying for on this. Uh, because. Uh, the acquisition, uh, we're just asking for the authority to acquire the parcels. Okay. Um, and so you've already appropriated the funds uh -huh. for purchasing right. the parcels, so you're, you're not being asked to appropriate the parcels. Um, so that's why there's not any funding involved. But right. I can tell you that the parcels are, um, the price is $90,000 for each parcel. Uh, we did have land appraisals done on them. Um, and the uh, and as we typically do, we appraise not only the land value, but we also appraise the timber value because that's something that we, we look at. And so for one of the parcels, the combined land and timber value is $91,348. Um, on the other parcel, it's $91,909 um, was the, what the appraisal came in at for the, both the land. So, so we feel that these the prices that we're paying um, are important to what the market value is. Thank you. Um, so, so I wish I could have given you more notice, but I'm not giving you as much notice as we had on it. Uh, <laughs> I, I was just wondering why we were doing that treatment. Yeah, but it's for, it's, it's again, we're doing it because um, $81,000 uh, and change will be eligible for yeah. being effectuating yeah. this. Well, if the state's feeling generous, we should take the money. Indeed. <laughs> Those are the kind of calls we like to get. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, any other questions on this land uh, purchase bill? Then all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. And the last one is 16123. These are budgetary transfers. So first all, I'm going to read off the receiving accounts, and then I'm going to tell you where the money's coming from. The total amount we're moving from one account to another is $177,328. Um, so here's where it's going. Um, other employee benefits is getting $43,135. Reserved for personnel way, the, the, um, the first one was other employee benefits, sick leave buyback. Reserved for personnel wage adjustment reserve is getting $16,613. Fire department um, maintenance of its buildings is getting $18,000. Uh, the police department's animal control services are getting $8,000. The police department technology services is getting $12,000. The recreation department's telephone system is getting $1,180. Legal services is getting $15,000. Engineering uh, department per personal, uh, personnel salaries is getting $8,000. IT for professional technical services getting $8,000, and for technology communications, they're getting $5,000. Uh, central services for street signal lights is getting $25,000. The city council for the audit is getting $2,500. Uh, city council advertising is getting $900. The city clerk for printing extra ballots is getting $3,000. And uh, the water treatment plant for overtime is getting $10,000. And here's where the money is coming from. Uh, fire department personal salaries, we're moving $18,000 out of there. Uh, police department permanent salaries, we're moving $20,000 out of there. DPW administration permanent salaries, we're moving $9,000 out of there. Medical insurance employee health insurance benefits, we're moving $85,580 out of that account. Interest on debt, which is interest on debt, we're moving $34,748. And water treatment plant salaries permanent, we're moving $10,000. So again, the total shifting around is $177,328. So we have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Second. Any questions for the mayor on this one? And this is typical at the end of the fiscal year where 
uh, moving money around a balancing house. Hearing no questions, all in favor of a positive aye. recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Oh, we didn't do that. We got so into spending money, we didn't do that. A motion to approve the minutes of our prior meeting, which was held June 2nd. Uh, June 2nd. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Very good. And with that, Pam is going to let us adjourn. So a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Thank you. All right. It's still light out. Um, <laughs> We come out of recess <coughs> and let's hit these financial orders one more time uh, before we do it one more time after that. Uh, first off, we have item 16.094. It's the financial order to appropriate $84,044,076 for FY 2017 general fund budget, give or take a dollar or so. <laughs> Motion to be second. Discussion. Any further discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Sherry? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. That passes in first reading. We'll be revisiting these votes, all these votes, by the way, on uh, <coughs> other special city council meeting on Tuesday uh, at 5 o'clock in these chambers. Item 16.095, the financial order to appropriate the sum of $588,450 for the FY17 Solid Waste Enterprise Fund Budget. Move to approve. Second. Second. Motion's made and second. Further discussion. Roll call, please. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Passes in first reading. Can I, can I have a motion to move the rest for revolving funds as a group? You want to move the revolving funds as a group? The remaining, yeah. The remaining funds? Or the, or remain, the remaining enterprise funds. They're not revolving Got it. Enterprise. I was going to say, because we're, we're not going to be jumping the revolving ahead, funds. Okay. Yeah, so. they're revolving. I think we're left with, we just did walk, solid waste, so we got sewer, water, storm, storm water. water. So you want to yeah. do item C, D, E. Yeah, C, D, and E. That's item 16.096, 16.097, 16.098. That's the financial order to appropriate the sum of $6,271,872 for the FY 2017 Sewer Enterprise Fund. It's also the financial 16.097 financial order to appropriate the sum of $7,463,768 for the FY 17 Water Enterprise Fund budget. And then item 16.098, the financial order to appropriate the sum of $1,957,558 for the FY17 Stormwater Enterprise Fund budget. Do you, is everyone, uh, all those in favor of moving these as a group, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so any discussion on these items? Roll call, please. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labar? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Shara? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Edwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Passes in first, all those passed in first reading. Next up, we have the 16.098, the financial order to appropriate the sum of 1,900,000. Whoop, oh, whoop, oh, oh, whoop, oh, whoop, oh, just did that. 16.099, the financial order to approve the revolving fund accounts for FY 2017. This is the first reading. So moved. Second. Motion's made second. Any for the discussion on the revolving funds. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Passes the first reading. Item 16.0101, the financial order to appropriate capital projects from FY 2016 general fund undesignated fund balance. So approved. Made in second. I, I, I did have a, a, a question. With the um, funds here that would come from, from, uh, from free cash combined with, I think uh, there's another motion here for $600,000 to go to yeah. free cash stabilization fund. I'm just curious where that leaves us at the start of the new fiscal year, roughly, with free cash and how that compares to other years. So, um, so where this will um, 
where after these votes are taken, we would be left with a balance of one hundred and twenty six nine hundred one hundred and twenty six thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars and sixty nine cents uh, in our free cash uh, balance. Um, and again, you may recall we also have orders uh, pending. I think they're pending second reading to make some moves out of the free cash account into both the stabilization account and into the fiscal stability fund. Um, uh, so uh, relative to the, uh, I guess we have to get some data on how we've closed out the year. Is that, that fairly typical? Yeah, for, we typically year don't. We, if, whatever you do, if, if, no matter how much you leave in it, it's just going to flow to free cash. Um, uh, so we try, though, to, to put money into these other accounts. Do you want to add something, Susan? Well, the last couple of years, we've pretty much run it down to close to the end um, yeah. because free cash goes away on June 30th and then it gets recertified and we'll get a certification in November next year and it will take all the excess funds that were unspent from the 2016 budgets and that will flow into our free cash. So we've pretty much been taking it in June and whatever's left and kind of putting it into right. our reserves. So we don't always don't have access to you don't have access recertified. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and obviously this year, um, one of the missing transfers that we usually make was the snow and ice account, yeah. uh, which were usually coming to you in April and May to say we need 300,000, 400,000, you know, whatever it is to, to backfill the snow and ice account. So um, that's allowed us <coughs> more, uh, some more flexibility. Um, you may remember we did the transfer of 400,000 back into stabilization fund. I, I think we have that still pending um, because we did have to <coughs> 400,000 out of stabilization to pay for the park and rec building, which we hadn't anticipated um, uh, in this paying for this year. So that, I kind of look at it, the light winter helped us pay for the park and rec building. Right. Literally. <laughs> um, it literally did. Literally um, did. So, uh, so we were able to replenish that in the, uh, in the uh, stabilization fund. Right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? We'll call it. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Schiller? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labar? Yes. Passes the first read. Can I move the next two as a group? The, part the next two, uh, six, item 16, the motion is to move 16-102 <coughs> and 16 as a group. That's a financial order to appropriate capital projects from receipts reserved for appropriation parking. The other is the financial order to appropriate capital projects from receipts reserved for appropriation and sale of land account to be used for citywide uh, fueling pro uh, eco project. And the motion is made, and I'll accept that as a second. All those in favor of moving them as a group, please say aye. Aye. Okay. Discussion on these two items. Roll call, please. Councilor Sherrard? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. All right, those two items pass in further reading. <coughs> Item 16104, financial order to appropriate $51,663,000. No, I'm sorry, $51,663, substantially less, and 36 cents for the uh, police department firing range first reading. Second. Any further questions on this? All those, in, oh, sorry, roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Lovato? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Sharon? Yes. Okay, that's the first reading. Item 16.105, financial order to appropriate $100,000 for retrofitting the replacement of windows and development plans for HVAC solution at the Forbes Library. Motion approved. Second. Motion's made and second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Passes right, in first reading. Item 16.106 of the financial order to appropriate $37,300 uh, for the West Farms and Park Street Cemeteries. Move to appropriate. Second. Motion is made. <coughs> Any discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Lovato? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? 
Yes. Passes in first reading. Councilor? I'd like to move N, P, and Q together. That's the cafeteria and the two roofs because they're all swarms. Uh, so I am. Uh, M, well, item 16107, the financial reporter to appropriate. Oh, I do that first. Yeah, <laughs> so we'll do that first. Uh, to appropriate $344,359 for capital projects from the Capital Stabilization Fund. Second. Okay. Second. Uh, discussion on this item. Roll call, please. Councilor White? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Lavarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Okay, passes. First reading. So you want to move. A motion is to move item 16.117 and 16.119. Is that what you're saying? No, I want to move uh, 117, 120, and, and 121 because they're all school spending on cafeterias or roofs and things. They're kind of so old. NP and Q or item 16.1. So item 16.117, the motion is to move as a group 16.117, a financial order to reprogram funds for the purpose of preparing architectural plans for the RK Finn Ryan Road School Cafeteria. Also uh, 16.120, the financial order to appropriate $40,000 for roofing replacement schematic design feasibility study at Leeds Elementary School. And item 16.121, a financial order to appropriate $40,000 for a roofing replacement design feasibility study at Bridge Street School Cemetery. Okay. I mean cemetery. <laughs> Bridge Street School Elementary School. Uh, uh, all those in favor of moving them as a group, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Any further discussion on the schools and cemeteries here? Roll call please. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labar? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Sherry? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Goodwill? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor White? Yes. Those passed in the first reading. Now uh, back up to 16.119, the financial order regarding the Senior Center gift fund expenditures for three. Approval. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor LaBarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Those passed in first reading. Now we're up to item 16.122 which is, as you know, as a request for two readings, so for your consideration. Order to authorize, uh, not plural, order to authorize the acquisition of two parcels of land located east side of Haydenville Road in Whateley, Massachusetts. Okay. Second. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Second. Uh, okay. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Goodwill? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor LaBarge? Yes. Okay, that's passed in the first reading. Motions to make and suspend rules to allow a second vote. Second, any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. I'll accept the motion for the second reading. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labar? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Item 16.122 passes in two readings. Item 16.123, that's the financial order for budget transfers. Motion's made and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labar? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Passes in first reading. Item 16.100. This is a financial order to um, appropriate $600,000 from the FY16 general fund to the fiscal stability stabilization fund and stabilization fund in second reading. Section is made in second for second reading. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Goodwill? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labar? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Thank you. Now we move into orders. Uh, item 16.116. This is an order to allow the school district 
to enter into contracts for instructional materials for a period not to exceed six years. Okay. Okay. Motions made and second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labar? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Sherry? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Goodwin? Yes. That passes in first reading. Uh, now joining me as we drive over to Bottoms Road and item 16.118. This is the order to accept Bottoms Road as a city street. Second. Motion made second. Any further discussion on this? Excuse You'll recall actually that, that we approved a resolution for this previously, but the resolution of course has no binding value insofar as this is to actually establish it by order. Okay, roll call please. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Goodwill. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. That passes in first reading. And then, last but not least, item 16.114. This is an order. This is the second reading to uh, grant BCA Incorporated a five percent TIF or tax incentive financing exemption on the new growth beginning in FY 2018. Motion approved. Second. Any further discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Lewis? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Goodwill? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor White? Yes. That passes in second reading. Believe it or not, it's not nine o'clock yet, and we have uh, completed the business of the council, and I would accept the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second reading. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you all very much. See you soon. <laughs> See you real soon.